Hi, welcome to the Gapster channel. I'm Gabby and today we're going to talk about some analog audio. Yes, you know me about a lot of digital stuff, but from time to time I like to spin an album or put a tape in the tape and the real player and uh, enjoy music the analog way. Uh, but today we're focusing on turntables and specifically on the aspect of vibrations. Uh, we, some problems like walking close to a turntable or dancing or uh, sometimes you put the volume high up and you start to hear rumbling coming back and, and we call that bass loop, uh, loop feeding into from the sound around you into the cartridge. And we're going to, these are really complex problems that are extremely hard to solve. And I'm going to show you how to solve them, or at least give it a good improvement in that regard. So it's all started when I decided to move my stereo uh, console uh, to a slightly different area. And uh, the turntable ended up being slightly closer to the speaker than I would like. But I do like where it is and I like the aesthetics and I really don't want to run very long cables to it. So I started experimenting with ways to reduce vibrations. And I did the regular trick that everybody talks about, getting the IKEA cutting board. Uh, put some sorbosane feet on it and um, before like I did anything as soon as I got the volume to like 30% you start to hear the rumble you start to hear woo, and you can tell right away there's a basically it's a call that a loop it's a feedback loop where the speaker vibrating and vibrating the cartridge and there's a loop in. I've seen a lot uh, of people mentioning the IKEA uh, butcher block uh, cutting board and uh, so I got myself one of those I put some sorbosane feet on it to no avail I was maybe I was able to go from instead of 30% to 35% volume but the wood and the sorbosane feet are still conducting a bass and uh, they might be good for other frequencies but for a bass or if you're moving they're really not gonna do anything for you. So I started experimenting and what I found is I'm gonna show you here uh, what I did. Put that away and uh, so this is the IKEA cutting board and voila what do we have underneath? We have five the cheapest of all cheap sponges and um, Sometimes you wonder why five, and it's very important. The, the number five is a very important one, and I'll show you why in a minute. So the small piece of wood in front of the, uh, um, or actually underneath the block, which is right here, now it's a little high, but it's meant to block the view of the sponges, especially once it goes down, there's very little space in between them, but I'm just gonna move that away for now. And so now why do we have five? So if we put four sponges and uh, we put the, the block on top, when you put your turntable, the turntable, unfortunately, the weight of the turntable is not even. So it's not going to all come down evenly. Remember, these sponges are very soft. So it's just going to go like maybe higher, lower here and higher there. And it's just going to be very uneven. You're going to like freak out. So what you want to do, if it goes down a little bit on one side, you're going to bring that number five sponge, I mean, and we are going to move it to where it's sagging. So you can play with that. In my case, it was like about here. And we are going to need a level. So I'm going to grab a level. So you're going to need a really good level and not a cheap level. This is a, actually this is a cheap level, but it's a really good one. It's by Irwin and it's extremely accurate. And yes, you can spend like 50, 25 and $50 on a, on a bubble, but this one does the trick. It's extremely sensitive. It's very high quality. I'll put a link for that below, but I'll put a link for a more expensive ones as well. But this one is, is really good. And uh, while you don't need to balance this, there's no point. This is going to be very wonky. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the turntable on. So we're just going to put the arm away. And what you want to do is, well, if you happen to have one of those uh, 
weight you can put it here because that is the absolute center and you're gonna see if it's moving this way basically you're gonna play with the fifth sponge till it actually balances you might have to do this after an hour or even a day later do some fine tuning because after a while it might settle in slightly different thing but that's what number five sponge do is to do all that balancing act and at the end you should have a very balanced uh, table uh, once I did that I was able to put my volume all the way to 70 like crank it to no veil there was nothing happening I could walk I could jump and nothing was happening it was really good it really really made a huge difference and then once it settles, and I would wait for maybe a day to do that, just cut another little piece of wood and just put it basically right underneath it. And now the gap is very small, so you still have uh, that resiliency, but it's not touching. But uh, aesthetically, no one can see all your colorful sponges in there. And, and it looks like nicely finished and looks more professional. So here you have it about the cutting board. The cutting board is nothing new. A lot of people have talked about it before, but no one has ever tried, at least that I know, the sponges thing. If you want to get the cutting board, it's from Ikea, and it's called the Aptilig, and uh, this is what it looks like here, I think. It's about $15. It's really cheap, and it's actually a very good quality cutting board. Next is what you want to do. The second tip I'm going to give you is uh, you want to take your arm, and in this case, this one comes apart, so I'm going to take it this for the for the sake of me moving. And what you want to do is your cartridge that is attached to the tone arm. You, it's usually there's a couple of screws in there. So you want to make sure you tighten them. And they should be pretty tight because the cartridge has to be a very solid part of the arm. If they're not tightened well, you're going to have this give and the vibration will also happen. And if your arm comes in two parts, most of them don't, but this is an old one. And uh, you can make sure also this is tightened as well. So at the end, the arm should be all, all tight and make sure all the pieces are good together. Uh, tip number three, uh, we're just going to take this bubble out. Tip number three is when you get a cartridge, uh, usually there is a, a weight you tell you, you know, it should have 1.6 to say 2.5 grams or whatever, there's a range. And uh, you can sometimes, if you increase the, uh, instead of putting it right in the middle, if you give it a little bit more weight, you might find that it's less prone to, to bouncing. Also, uh, you will probably get a little bit more bass as well. The more weight, you might get a little bit more bass. So you can also fine tune the sound by how heavy your, uh, your cartridge is applying on the on the uh, turn on the on the disc you can also uh, other tips is you can invest in one of these uh, weights uh, oh, this is a really cool one actually I like the aesthetics of it but what's most important if you are getting a weight don't just get a regular weight you need a weight that locks this one has a locking mechanism so when you actually put the weight on it's not just a weight so you can actually push it down out and then tighten it and that's you got a very nice grip as well so you almost like double the weight without the extra weight if you have uh, a heavy weight and your turntable can't handle a lot of weight even if it can when you turn it on don't just turn it on I, what I usually do I just give it a little start and then I turn it on and that gives it a little bit easier on the belts and it's a lot easier on your turntable drive systems. So another thing is you can experiment with different mats and uh, some mats will, re will reduce the vibrations a little bit and uh, but that's there's a lot of, uh, that's a whole world of mats out there. But for me, the most important tweak was the sponges and the cutting board. I tried the cutting board, like I said before, as on its own, like everybody mentioned, it really, it helped a little bit, but not as a way, it really didn't solve my problem. Uh, but the sponges, they're like wonders, and the sound was really, really good after that. 
Uh, also, if you're still having, if you want to do even more, what you could do, you could do two cutting boards. One cutting board with sorbosane feet. On top of it, you can do another cutting board with the sponges. And what will happen, because now you have two, you can uh, basically reduce two different frequencies. So the sponges work really good on the bass, on the low, uh, low frequencies. And the sorbosane will work really good on the mid frequencies. And uh, that's going to make probably the best of both worlds if you're still having uh, some issues. I hope this was really helpful to everybody and I thought I'll share with you my experiment and what really helped me at the end because that's what the bottom line is. And uh, I'm going to put a link below about all the things I've used, uh, you know, the IKEA cutting board name, uh, the weight here that's from Wayne Audio, uh, the bubble that's from Erwin, and I'll put links of them below just so people will, if they want to, uh, get things that I know that seem to work. It's it save you lots of research uh, to find things. If you like this video, please uh, consider subscribing. I'll put a little speaker below to, uh, to click on that. Uh, if you'd like to see other videos where, for example, one I talk about different uh, really good songs to really improve your system that are very well recorded, I will put uh, a link in the corner above. Uh, take care and we'll see you in another video.